This is Brian Carlton for ABN Newswire. I'm back at the Boulders Club of New South Wales for the May Symposium Resources Roadshow where listed companies and unlisted companies get a chance to get up close and personal with potential investors to their mutual in benefit. It's a very relaxed, informal environment. Another of tonight's presenting companies is Linus Corporation Limited, ASX LYC, which is a fairly large company engaged in the exploration and development of rare earth deposits and exploration for other mineral resources. Linus has operations here in in Australia and in Asia. Its President, Corporate and Business Development, Dr. Matthew James, joins me now. Dr. Matthew, welcome. Thank you, Rob. Now, first up for the uninitiated, rare earth deposits. What exactly are we talking about here? So rare earths are a suite of elements which are used in, in many applications. We're actually addicted to rare earths, we just don't know it. Okay. Right? Uh, they're in your car, they're in your cell phone, they're in your computer, they're all around us. Elements that you probably haven't heard of, cerium, lanthanum, neodymium, presidinium, europium, terbium, dysprosium, I say, there are right. elements on the periodic <laughs> table, but they're fundamental to technology we use today. Okay, so when you talk about the uh, the applications, um, I guess batteries would be one battery That's technology. Right. Nickel metal hydride batteries. Yep. The metal hydride is actually an alloy of rare earths. If you think about that, the hybrid the hybrid cars for Toyota, Ford, Honda are all based on a nickel metal hydride battery platform today. Okay, uh, and, and they're they're also fl fluorescent the light bulbs too. That's right. Uh, so compact fluorescent light bulbs, which are being legislated around the world, contain europium, terbium, yttrium, and without them, they don't work. Uh, and, and wind turbine generators too. Yes. More, more efficient wind turbine generators. That's right. Those large uh, th plus three megawatt wind turbines are moving to what's known as a direct drive system and they require very large rare earth magnets. The neodymium magnets, which are the strongest magnets in the world, each uh, megawatt of wind turbine uses up about 500 kilos of neodymium oxide. So uh, the growth of the wind turbine industry, particularly offshore, uh, is going to drive the growth of this direct drive technology and grow the, the magnet market they, tremendously. they are popping up like uh, mm. mushrooms all over the world, mm. aren't they, really? Okay, so increased efficiency, lighter materials as well for industry, very mm. important in terms of efficiencies. Yeah, that's right, and also lighting in terms of uh, flat plasma TVs or LCD screens, uh, the colour and light that's created in those uh, screens are using rare earths, similar to the compact fluorescent light bulb, but a slightly different use of them. Okay, now am I right in thinking that most of the rare earths used globally have been sourced from China? That's right. China today supplies over 95% of the world's rare earths. And that is a concern because in terms of consumption, China uses up just over 50%, but the rest of the world, Japan, US and Europe, make up the other 48%. With 95% of the world's rare earths coming outside of China, China is actually starting to restrict the export of this material, uh, and hence the concern from those other users. Which leaves you with an opportunity to change all that. That's right. I mean, Linus will be coming on stream next year. We'll be the uh, first major new mine coming on stream outside of China. We actually think we're two to four years ahead of anybody else. Uh, and with 22,000 tonnes as our target production, we could be making up, you know, 15% of the world's rare earth market. So how large a deposit is that in terms of the, uh, the, the global potential for rare earths? Well, um, the market is forecast to grow to 180,000 tonnes of rare earths. So we're not talking about a large market, uh, but Mount World has 1.2 million tonnes of contained rare earths in our Jork Code resource. We're looking to produce 22,000 tonnes a year, so you can see we've got a long mine life there. Um, and if we get to, when we get to 22,000 tonnes and there is further customer demand, we're then looking to grow beyond that. Would I be right in thinking that uh, that would be one of the larger deposits of rare earths around it's the planet? It's certainly uh, the richest in terms of grade. We're at uh, about 14% in our mine pit. That compares to about 5% in China, for example. And uh, in terms of grade and the different rare earths that we have makes us a very valuable asset. And uh, so the, uh, the demand is really outstripping supply at the moment, isn't it? E even today. today, let alone over the next few years. That's right. The Chinese supply system is actually very fragile, uh, with only total production forecast for 2010, 124,000 tonnes. Demand, as I said, over 130,000 tonnes. And the difference is being taken out of the stockpiles through the supply system. As those sup stockpiles reduce, price tensions are starting to come into the market, and we've seen prices uh, go from uh, an average of about $10 a kilo or $10,000 a tonne to over 
$15,000 a tonne today. So at what stage are you in terms of developing the mine in WA? So the mining campaign is complete. We've got uh, 700,000 tonnes of stockpiles on site. Our concentration plant, which we're building right next to Mount World, which is where we'll concentrate the rare earths, will be complete at the end of this year, in December. And then our plant in Malaysia, which is like our refining plant, to take the concentrate and produce the different rare earth products will be ready in the middle of 2011. I was going to ask you about that. Why Malaysia? Why Malaysia? Very good gas supply, very good water supply, very good chemical reagent supply, none of which are uh, available in the required quantities in WA. And it's much better to take our concentrate to where those are than try and build that infrastructure around where we are uh, in Mount World. And, and what about ultimately exporting it from Malaysia? Uh, Infrastructure-wise? Infrastructure-wise, it's very good. There's a container port right next to us. Uh, it's a good distribution hub. And also the, the Malaysian government is very proactive on foreign direct investment. We get a 12-year tax-free holiday in Malaysia. Wow. Oh, gee, yeah. that's good news, isn't yeah. it? And, uh, and Linus, uh, the balance sheet's pretty good at the moment. You've got cash in the bank to finance both of these plants um, after your capital raising last year. That's right. We're looking at more, what, an investment of more than $400 million. That's right. Total investment uh, will be over $500 million. Oh, okay. We've got $400 million left to spend, and we've got that money in the bank. Now, while these rare earth metals do contribute to uh, energy and environmental uh, efficiencies once they reach the final product, Mining and processing them can be a kind of messy business. You're very concerned about that, aren't you? We are, um, particularly because the industry today in China is not environmentally sustainable. Um, there are issues in China. The Chinese government recognises this fact, and, and that's one of the reasons why they're trying to restrict the industry in China to improve the environmental So it's not a financial there. argument, it is an environmental argument? Uh, absolutely, okay. yeah. Um, and in, in uh, Linus, safety, health and environment very important and in this industry you can't pollute in your mining or your processing to produce these green uh, energy efficient products. What was the general thrust of your presentation tonight? What were the key points you wanted to get across to potential investors? I think the key points were out outlining that uh, demand is growing, supply is, is very fragile today, uh, the Chinese government understands the strategic nature of rare earths hence the, the restrictions uh, and that Linus will be the first company outside of China in production next year. And the, uh, the benefits of getting to talk to potential investors at a, uh, at a roadshow like this, like the Symposium Roadshow? I think it's investors and also some analysts that are here getting the story of, of Linus out. It's an unusual story. Uh, there aren't many uh, rare earth companies out there, so um, people don't know about it. You know? So we have to go out proactively and reach out to investors in the investment community and tell our story. Dr. Matthew James, Vice President, Corporate and Business Development for Linus Corporation, thanks so much for joining me. It's a pleasure. Thanks very much. This is Brian Carlton for ABN Newswire.